Hello, I'm Robin Vincent, and welcome to this, the beginning of our Surface Pro 4 journey. I wanted to let you know what the plan is to rough out a bit of a schedule and to introduce you to my first impressions of the Surface Pro 4. I started this whole project because I believe the Microsoft Surface was the portable music making device that I'd been looking for. When the Surface Pro 3 came out, it looked like the specs had finally caught up with what it was I wanted to do. And so I took the plunge. I started blogging about it and making videos because, well, because I thought it was interesting. The Surface Pro 3 proved itself to be completely awesome. And I made some really cool discoveries along the way and found different and interesting means of overcoming the challenges and limitations. Now we're moving on to the Surface Pro 4, kindly donated by my wonderful Kickstarter backers. The specs and technology are even better and I imagine that this is going to become an awesome music making machine. So I'm going to get stuck into making videos about making music on the Surface Pro 4. Hooray! I will try to cover as much stuff as I can from basic setup to really complex demonstrations of software and hardware working in perfect harmony. From performance testing to performing live. Now, I should point out that I don't work for Microsoft. I'm not affiliated to Microsoft in any way, although I've probably made a couple of friends there, which is nice. If you're encountering me for the first time, hello, welcome. Let me give you my sort of 30 second biography. Um, after getting a degree in music technology back in 1996, I joined a firm called Turnkey, where it was the biggest music shop in London, and we sold gear to people. I was there as a PC product specialist and soon a PC product manager. At that time, it was before ASIO, before VST, before software synthesis, and making music on computers was really hard. As all these magical bits of technology started to grow up around us, we became distributors of native instruments, of Giga Sampler, of Unity, all these sort of fledgling software and computer music firms. And I essentially became the UK tech support for all of these mad bits of software. And none of it really worked very well. Certainly Windows computers didn't work very well. And so it is an immensely challenging time in trying to show people how to make music and to do music production successfully on a Windows PC. In 1999, I wrote a book on making music on a Windows PC and followed up a couple of years later with one all about guitarists making music on PCs. We decided there was a massive gap in the market for a, a decent computer, and so we designed and built the Carillon AC1. And until 2005, I was the technical director of Carillon Audio Systems. After that, I left to become a rock star and I produced an album of meditation music. And then after deciding that I'm not actually gonna be able to make a living out of making music, I went back to doing what I do best, which is building computers. So I then became the UK arm of Rain Recording. Two years ago, I was finally able to go completely independent and set up Molten Music Technology with the idea of building awesome computers for music production and producing interesting online content about computer music, music technology, and the like. So the Surface Pro 4 certainly comes somewhere in amongst that, but it's certainly not my day job. So my aim, you know, is to produce one of these videos a week on average, but sometimes I've just got to build computers. So I've had the Surface Pro 4 for a couple of weeks and these are my first impressions. Mm, yeah, okay, it's very velvety, uh, more so I think than the Surface Pro 3. It definitely feels weighty, but not heavy. It feels like it's worth 1200 quid, which it is. Finish, of course, is excellent. Everything about it just screams uh, quality and precision and that sort of stuff. You are not disappointed to hold it in your hands by any stretch. The one I have is the i5 6300 2.4 gigahertz, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of SSD drive. I know I will be constantly asked about this, so I'm going to stick it on the website somewhere for people to read. I'm not gonna dwell on the specs because there's tons of reviews out there. They're all about just sort of specs and, and things like that. And that's just not that interesting to me. I wanna know how well it makes music, which we will be getting onto very, very soon. Okay, simple comparison to the Surface Pro 3. Here we go, here they are. You'd be really hard pressed to notice anything like resembling a difference, really, as you can see. 
the same size in almost every respect. They feel very similar in weight and they look to be pretty much identical in, in depth, but I know that the Surface Pro 4 is a tiny bit thinner by a whisker. The only hardware change really is that the volume control, which is here on the Surface Pro 3, has now been relocated up here on the Surface Pro 4, which allows this whole space here to house the pen. <laughs> That's just so awesome. I can't tell you how wonderful that is. I mean, it's such a simple thing, but ever since I've got it, the pen has stayed with it the entire time. That never happened with the Surface Pro 3. It was always wandering off. I was always finding it somewhere else or finding one of my kids trying to draw on the wall with it. But no, this, it stays there. It's just a simple, it's a magnet. It doesn't come off, you know, you can pull it, of course. Awesome, thank you for that. Because it's the little things. It's the little things that make me happy. Right, let's head indoors for a quick tour of what it's like when it's turned on. So here they are side by side. They are, as I say, physically almost identical in size and perhaps on the camera here, the perspective is gonna make the Surface Pro 4 look much bigger. So I've got my little camera here that I'm gonna bring in for a bit more of a close up. So let's have a look at these bezels then. On the left, the Surface Pro 4, on the right, the Surface Pro 3. As you can see, the Pro 4 is that little bit narrower, giving you a larger overall screen, the specs of which you can read about all over the internet. The other thing is that the keys have kind of drifted apart on the Surface Pro 4, so you have this, the space, spacing between them compared to the Surface Pro 3 over here where they're all absolutely side by side. And it makes for a so much better typing experience. It is just head and shoulders above what you had on the Surface Pro 3. The trackpad also is larger and made of glass. And again, that's a much nicer experience. So just in a hands-on, getting your fingers on the device kind of way, the Surface Pro 4 just feels so much better than the Surface Pro 3. The pen, wonderfully stuck on the side here, feels different. I mean, it has this sort of flat bit here, with, which is the magnet with which it sticks onto the side, which is fine. So that feels a little bit different, but it's not, it's not in the way, it's not, it doesn't make it uncomfortable, but the feel on the screen is different. It's hard to explain. I mean, let me bring up uh, OneNote or something that I can write on. Which is nice. When you compare it to the Surface Pro 3, so the difference in feel is hard to explain. But I would say that it might be the, the tip, it might be the nib or whatever. The Surface Pro 4 pen has this kind of extra tip thing going on. I did buy the box of tips, these, this thing here, which I will try out to see if they make any difference to anything. I don't know, they might not be of any help whatsoever. But suffice to say that the feel of this pen on the Surface Pro 4 has a better, seemingly more um, more tactile, more involved feel to it than the Surface Pro 3 pen on the Surface Pro 3, which felt sort of glassy and slippery. The other cool thing though with the, with the Surface Pro 4 pen is that the uh, rubber is on the end, so I can rub things out with it, which is nice. But I have lost the buttons. See, this has got buttons on it. Is that gonna be a problem? Are the buttons going to be a problem? I don't know. I haven't really missed them yet, but maybe I will. I just don't know. Also with rubbing out, you also got one tap to open one note, uh, or I can hold it and it'll bring up Cortana. And then I can ask Cortana a nice question like, Hey, how's it hanging? <laughs> Something not right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that brings me briefly onto Windows 10, I suppose, and the, the whole out-of-the-box experience that I have with the Surface Pro 4. Now, this is the first device I've had that came with Windows 10 pre-installed. Every other experience I have with Windows 10 is via upgrading it myself. And I have to say, 
that it was all a bit shaky. The first thing I wanted to do was set up the Windows Hello thing. The Windows Hello is where you stare at the screen, the camera up here identifies you, face recognition, iris scanning, I don't know if it does that, brain scan probably takes your blood and then decides that it's you and goes, oh, hello, how lovely, here's Windows 10 for you. And that's great, and I was excited about that. It seemed like some kind of adventure. But a number of times it would sort of lock up when trying to identify me, which isn't particularly flattering, or it would get itself into some kind of feedback loop where it was constantly trying to recognize me, but at the same time wanting a password in order to confirm something and then recognizing me, and then wanting a password, then recognizing me. And I couldn't find a way to switch it just to password. So I ended up having to sort of hard reset it, which is never a good thing. It's not what you want to do. But once I turned off Windows Hello, things started to sort of smooth out. And I'm now a massive fan of the pin number login. Windows needed to update itself an awful lot, and then it needed to think about it, and then it needed to update itself again. I found, you know, basic apps like the email program would crash when I launched it. One note, I couldn't get that to open. It would come up and then it would disappear, come up and then disappear every single time. And it wasn't until it had run some updates and then some more updates, and then came back to it the next day and run some more updates, did these things actually start working properly. So my advice on if you ever get yourself a Windows 10 device is that you need to give it a couple of days to sort itself out. It needs some time to settle down, to update things, to work out what the heck it's doing, and then it seems to be wonderfully stable. But it is the sort of thing that it should say in large friendly letters on the cover. Otherwise, those first couple of days are gonna be sort of quite frustrating and it can knock your confidence in your purchase. Other things I've discovered, well, the fan hasn't come on yet. I've used it quite a bit and I'm yet to hear a peep out of the cooling system, which is fantastic. Service Pro 3 comes on all the time, nearly without doing a thing. You're sitting there and then whoosh, and then it just likes telling you that it's there and it's excited to be working hard and so likes to make nice sort of fan type noises about it. Surface Pro 4, no, you just really can't be bothered. So it just sits there perfectly silent, which is exactly what you want. I'm sure I'll be bringing it to life once I start running plugins and stuff, but for the moment in general use, pretty much as far as I can remember, the fan has not come on. The audio output on the other hand is not silent in any degree. It's now wonderfully loud. Service Pro 3 always suffered from having a very low output volume on its inbuilt speakers. Sometimes to the point, you know, you couldn't really hear it if you're trying to watch a movie or uh, watch some media streaming or something like that and any background noise at all would mean that you couldn't really hear it. Whereas a Surface Pro 4, much louder, far far louder and that's what you want. Although sadly it does suffer from the two audio output driver weirdness that we had on the Surface Pro 3 where the speakers and the headphone output actually have separate drivers and separate processing and audio engines. But if you think about it, the sound processed through headphones should be dealt with differently than sound being processed through speakers, because it's a different listening experience. So that's cool, but the downside is that a lot of door software doesn't understand that, and so just presents you with two separate drivers. So if you're playing some music and you're working on your headphones, you say, hey, come over and listen to this. Not only do you have to unplug the headphones, you have to faff around changing drivers. Sometimes that means shutting down pieces of software, changing the driver, and starting it back up again. But those are the sort of things I will look into in much greater detail. My only real disappointment is the lack of this wonderful hardware button. I love this button. I use it all the time on the Surface Pro 3 and it's not there. So I've got to use either the, the one which is squeezed down the corner here, this one, or the one on the keyboard, of course. But they've done the same with the Windows phones. They've taken off all the hardware buttons and made them all part of the screen. And personally, that's a shame. Oh well. So this is where we begin. My first task is to run some performance tests on the Surface Pro 4 side by side with the Surface Pro 3 and see how they compare. We're not talking frame rate benchmarks or gaming benchmarks or 3D benchmarks or anything like that. We're talking about how many plugins can it run? How many D verbs I can drop into Pro Tools? And what sort of polyphony I can get out of Halion in Cubase? Performance tests that are actually relevant to making music. 
from there I'll start running through bits of uh, non-touch door software to see how well they cope with the touch experience and with the resolution of the screen and with the pen and touch and all those sorts of things. And then I'll start moving into the more touch enhanced bits of software like Stage Light and Bitwig and FL Studio. And I'll also be keeping an eye out for any more touch implementation in other bits of software. I've got the new Surface Dock and I'd like to compare that with a regular USB hub, see how that goes. And I've got gigs to prepare for and Windows 10 to tweak. So, lots to do. Feel free to get in touch and to you know, ask questions in any form you like. And to make sure that you're notified about the next video, then subscribe, follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, all the usual places. You know the drill by now. So until next time, go make more tunes.